Vedanta is often also called, in Sanskrit, it's Sanatana Dharma, which means eternal values or eternal principles. So what makes them eternal is that they transcend time, transcend culture, transcend geography, all that kind of thing. So now once we've got this understanding of higher values, we need to understand what this idea of higher and lower actually means. So when we talk about a higher value, what we mean is, is that it is a more accurate reflection of the reality. Example, money brings happiness. It's a statement. True or false? False. False? Okay. It's false, it but it's a subjective uh, statement. So if you go down to Venice Beach, or you go to Santa Monica here, and you see a guy who's got no house and no shoes, give him enough money to just take care of those things. His subjective well-being will certainly be enhanced. Do you want to sleep outside tonight? Of course not. Give him enough money to have just basic shelter, he will become a happier human being. So in that sense, money will be bringing happiness. But... We know the money psychology. It's not, it has a diminishing value. So if you have $10 million, if you then double that to $20 million, are you twice as happy? Yeah. Of course not. There's a diminishing return. Not only that, but a poor relationship with money can actually make us miserable, and it can have deleterious impacts on the society around us. There's lust for, for, for wealth. So... Money brings happiness. It's got some truth to it, but it's not something you'd live your life by. Another truth statement. Money has a diminishing value, a limited value, and the potential for unhappiness. This is another truth statement. Now, when you compare the two, which one is more true? The latter. The second one is more true. It's a higher value. So this is what we mean. So this idea of higher value simply means higher truths, more accurate truths. So Vedanta then gives us a, a way to, for us to, to rank the things in our life, to rank the things in our world. And then you decide, what will I pursue? It's up to us. So the question then is, why are we pursuing anything? For everything you've always done in your life, a feeling, why do you want to have a feeling of accomplishment? Happiness, we're chasing happiness. Happiness, happiness and, peace. happiness and peace. Yeah. So one person says, you know, if I accomplish this thing, I'll be happy. If I can, if I get my startup off the ground and it gets to a certain, you know, critical mass, I'll be happy. And then if I take it public, I'll be happy. And then if I move on and start a new project, all these accomplishments, I'll be happy. Or a person is lonely. So what does he do? He finds a partner and gets married. A man wants to have a family. So he has a family. All of these things that we are doing in life, we are pursuing something. Call it happiness, call it peace, call it subjective well-being. You can give it any name you want. But it's an internal condition that we're pursuing. That moment of connection with the result so that we feel, ah, everything is exactly as it should be. Things don't need to be different. I'm hungry. Something needs to be different. I need to have food in my belly. I'm lonely. Something needs to be different. I need a partner. I don't understand how life works. I need more information about how life works, so I study Vedanta. So we feel this sense of incompleteness. We feel a lacuna within. And that drives us to acquire, to possess, and to enjoy things in the world with the fond hope that that feeling will go away and I'll be complete now. So this is what he's saying. Humans feel a sense of imperfection, feel a void within. This feeling generates thoughts to flow towards the world to fill the void. So everything that we are doing is for that sense of peace and happiness. Okay, not just peace and happiness. For example, you go and watch a movie. You go and see Rogue One. You like Star Wars. You've seen the movie. It's a nice movie. It's good. You don't immediately feel afterwards you need to go and watch it again. I know what happens, I know what all the effects are, I know the storyline, I know how it fits into the other stories and so on and so forth. I don't need to keep going back and watching it over and over and over again, I know it. But the same experience is not true when it comes to happiness. Let's take the example of material wealth. I'm at my job, 
are making $60,000 a year. And I noticed that the people around me, you know, that guy there, same qualifications as me, he's been here about the same length of time, he's on 68. Yeah, I think I deserve some sort of pay rise. Two years I've been here, no pay rise. There's a sense of incompleteness. So you go to your boss and you lay out the, the case for your pay rise and you get it. From 60, you jump to 70. How do you feel? Happy, good, satisfied. Does it stay? No. Within six months, 12 months, two years, that feeling comes back again. And so we want it again. It diminishes over time. It's like when you ring a bell, right? You strike that bell, dong. It's loud, clear, and sharp. Over a period of time, that tone just gradually fades away, and you need to ring it again to get the same tone back again. Same thing with our happiness. We contact the object, it rings the bell, and we get that high. And, of course, it decays over time. And so what do we do? We need to go back and get it again. And so we are thrust once again back into the flow of action to achieve so that we can get happiness. So we don't just want happiness. What do we want? Lasting happiness. We don't just want it once. Oh, I know what happiness is like now. That's, it's really nice. I don't need to go back and have it again. Uh -uh. So the question is, where is that happiness? Where does happiness actually exist? Where is it? It's within ourselves. Yeah, it's a subjective experience. I put the food in my mouth and now I am happy. Happiness is a purely internal phenomenon. And in a, in a sense, it's completely independent of external circumstances. So the question is, if this, if this happiness is an internal phenomenon, then how do we get it? Because what we see ourselves doing is constantly searching for and acquiring and enjoying things outside of ourselves. As I said, you know, the job, the relationship, the family, the career, this will make me happy. We're constantly looking outside of ourselves for that sense of happiness. So the, the fundamental principle that this philosophy is based on is what he said here in the, in the first couple of lines. Human beings have lost the knowledge of their real self. So what this is saying is that the native home of that satisfaction that we are searching for exists within us. Unfortunately, what we do is we confound outward experiences with inner joy. I'll explain what I mean. A person takes a cigarette and smokes. A smoker takes a cigarette and smokes. How does he feel? He feels satisfied. satisfied. He feels joy. What happens then is that the mind conflates the experience of smoking and the joy and says that the joy must have come from the smoking. That happiness, joy or satisfaction must be inherent in the cigarette. And so what do I do when I feel unhappy? Go back to my cigarettes because that's where happiness lies. Now this is not a conscious thought that we're having. Now, it's not that we're saying, oh I know where happiness is, it's in the cigarettes. It's a tacit assumption that the mind makes. It's invisible to us but nonetheless exerting its influence in terms of the nature of our desires and the nature of our activities. But if happiness was inherent in the cigarette, what would we find? Oh, we'd all smoke. It wouldn't be, uh, we'd, all, we'd all have the same experience. That's right. Uh, think of it this way. Uh, you take a flame, take a candle, <laughs> and you light it, and you put your hand just, just at the tip of the flame. What do you experience? Heat, burning. Everybody who puts their hand in the flame feels heat because heat is inherent in fire. Every object, every being that touches the flame, that heat is imparted to it because heat is inherent in fire. But everyone who touches the cigarette doesn't get the joy. So it indicates that the joy is not inherent in the cigarette. It's in the way that we have chosen to relate to the cigarette. Joy is not inherent in your partner. This, uh, this idea, you complete me, from Jerry Maguire. <laughs> So from this movie, you complete me. Okay, it's a romantic idea, romantic in scare quotes, but no external object can deliver happiness because the same person that you think completes you, when he goes to work, his workmates can't stand him. 
not everyone is enjoyed by everybody else. Your beloved may not be beloved to everybody else. So it's not inherent in the person. And yet, we keep looking for that person that can uh, give me that sense of completion that I'm looking for. Not going to happen. Not very romantic, but take truth over romance any day. In fact, it's not even very romantic, just as a little diversion. You think about it. Imagine someone says, sweetheart, when I walk down the street, I can't do it unless you are holding me up. You make my physical body able to walk. Yeah, this is not beautiful. This is dependency. My inner self is complete when you're around me. Make yourself complete first. Don't rely on me to make you complete. What a burden you place upon the other person by expecting them to make you complete. It's kind of okay when you're a teenager. It's okay. It's okay. It's, it's okay as long as you don't mind a little bit of teenage suffering. <laughs> It does happen. It does happen. And hopefully what happens through those teenage experiences is we start to learn, aha, uh -huh, maybe I was expecting that person to deliver something that they could not. Uh -huh. So this again becomes our understanding of higher values, that no person per se can make me sustainably, genuinely happy. Now that doesn't mean that we should shun relationships. We need relationships to support the work that we're doing in our own lives. The projects of our own lives need relationships. Don't expect it to deliver more than it can. Money can bring a certain degree of happiness. Don't expect it to deliver, to deliver more than it can. 